Okay, so at this point you should have a fully functional server running on some machine of yours. And uh, what we're about to do is we're about to install a user interface that gives you access to all the maintenance and things that you want to do to your server uh, through a web interface. So uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead here and show you the minimum number of, of command line operations that you have to execute in order to get that server uh, uh, running the webmin. Um, uh, one thing to note, uh, when you try it, if you, if you have uh, a web page or a uh, URL that's already pointed at that server, you're going to get nothing until you go in and manage your Apache server and set up uh, um, virtual hosts. Uh, but just to show you that that machine is operating, you type in your server name from within your network and uh, when you hit enter you'll see an Apache default page gets served up. That's because when you made a, a LAMP stack on your server, it put in a fully running web server with the Apache module and, uh, and threw in a default page. So uh, you're going to need to open a uh, shell to, to be able to, to access that, that server from some other machine, or you could sit at your server and just log in and type in the commands at the server. But uh, so pop open a terminal window and you uh, execute a command SSH followed by your full username that you set up when you installed the server at like an email address and then the server's name. Um, and then you'll see, uh, okay, you got a brand new server and it's it's worried that uh, that you you need to to affirm that this is a, a good server that you want to get to obviously it is because you built it so uh, you go ahead and put your password in uh, so now you're actually logged in onto your your brand new server so uh, let's pop over here to the webmin instructions page. If you go to webmin.com and you're looking for this page, uh, this is what you want. See how you got your different choices for different distributions. So I'm doing the Debian because um, I'm Ubuntu. Okay, here's a mistake I make often. There's an easy way and a hard way to do this, this operation. And the easy way is listed down here, but if you're like me, you just start reading at the top, you'll do this set of instructions first. So uh, this is an easy, easier way to do things. So uh, uh, what they're telling you to do here is edit your sources list on your server and add this particular line here. So I'm going to go ahead and actually pretty lazy about typing so so we're gonna uh, super user do a command and you you need to run a program that will edit these text files there's a bunch of choices there's Pico there's Nano uh, there's VI for the, the hardcore old timers I don't think there's a big difference for something as small as this, but uh, the I for some reason just uh, tend to like using the Nano. Uh, I've heard it called the dummy editor, and then you got a password again because you're running the sudo command. So, uh, so now we're actually editing that, that, that 
flat text file to put in this new uh, this new uh, source for for apt packages. So I'm going to copy that. Um, you can make notes for yourself here if you want to, like hashtag. Uh, in this case, it's kind of unnecessary. Um, okay. So, note at the bottom, I think this is why it's called the dummy editor, because it always tells you the commands that do things. So, one of the things that we want to do is write out that file and then exit. Uh, if you do exit first, it'll ask you if you want to save uh, that file before you leave. So, I'm just going to do Control X. See, it's asking me, yes, I want to save the file, so I give it a big Y. And then it's asking me, do I want to overwrite it? Some people that are uh, a little extra cautious will make a backup file of that sources list first, which uh, basically you're, you're doing a command sudo cp. Uh, cp and then at set app sources list, space it's at app sources list dot bak or some other name just so that there's two different files one the original before you messed with it and the other one so so now uh we're ready to to go through and run these these commands here for the easy install so Oh, yeah, by the way, uh, I, I think slash root might work on certain distributions, but Ubuntu server, it's cd slash to get to the root. Um, what, 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 what? What did I do? Does it mean there's no? What is this? What is this? There's no CD. Just testing the directory list. I'm in my own directory. Uh, that's odd. I wonder if uh, maybe just... Oh, oh. Uh, it must have been that uh, the change directory command uh, wasn't needed. You don't need to sudo to do that. So, eh. I don't remember ever getting denied sudo cd. Okay, so we're in the root directory and we're going to get this this uh, J Cameron key and then we're gonna run this apt key add command. Okay, now one of the things that you want to do after that is update the apt get and what it's going to do is it's going to bring in all the things that are available since you installed, uh, including this new repository. So.
Okay, so now that it knows where this software is, it'll be able to pull it down to install it. And put the last piece here, Webman. Oh, punch. And yes, we want to do that. Now, uh, one of the things that's typical when you've made a installation media like that thumb drive or a CD-ROM, the, the software that you're putting onto a new server is most likely already outdated when you install it. So uh, there's, there's other updates, security updates and so forth that probably need to be installed. I could do them with a couple of shell commands. Um, uh, it sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade. Those two commands would take care of it, but I want to go, I want to uh, put those on with the Webmin software. So, might have a little time compression going on here. I remember uh, recently the the, uh, the Webman package seems to take longer than I remember it to install so it's just going to sit there like that for a while. whilst that is going on. So the Webman interface is a very fancy point-and-click user interface for your server and uh, the uh, one of the corollaries to Webman uh, is Userman. Userman uh, also like like the web men, you got user men, and then you got instructions for uh, how to put the user men on. Install Debian. That's the uh, that's where we're at right now. Um, so this page also has uh, more difficult instructions and easier instructions. The thing that makes the the first set more difficult is because usually your installation is missing one or more of these pieces of software. So you might have been missing the apt-get, you might have been missing the install, the Perl, the libnet, OpenSSL. You could be missing a bunch of these different things. Uh, so when, when you do it the way I just showed, those things are put on as a matter of course. So Here's your easy instructions. So you could skip this one because you just did it in order to install Webman. So just those, those two commands there we'll need to do. So what Userman is is a way to give access to specific people who are going to collaborate with you and work on different things. and. Um, it gets them, uh, you set up a username and default password, you can have two-factor authentication for your auxiliary users or employees or whatever you want to call them. Um, they're able to interact with your system and work on projects and whatnot without having uh, access to usermen. Userman also you could you could make uh, 
auxiliary logins for people to your Webman application to. And Webman is something that you can hit from outside of your network if you uh, set up a few things right. Um, uh, there's where the packages uh, I was talking about these packages that may or may not be on your system already. It This method of install goes ahead and looks for all the missing things, puts them on. Okay, so we're done. So right now, your Webman server is fully functioning. So the first time you go on to your Webman, you're going to run into a safety concern here. Uh, the Webman uses a, uh, a uh, what do you call, um, a key, uh, encryption key, that's uh, snake oil is the name of it, uh, but the, because it's not uh, like a expensive paid for with Verisign or something key that's on your system, it the, your web browser is going to think, oh, danger, danger, you're heading somewhere that you shouldn't. So you need to go through a little bit of effort to make this uh, a URL that you're allowed to go to. So... Um, And as I'm logging in here, I'm noticing that, that I'm, I, I was goofing around with the, I, I was goofing around with the different looks and feels of Webman. This isn't the, typically the, the uh, default one. Uh, okay, so this, I, I had mentioned this earlier. This, this, I feel like Trump, I'm distracted so much that I'm saying things. <laughs> half sentences and stuff. Okay, so I, I mentioned before that even when you had just installed a brand new server from your media, it's already outdated. So Webman is notifying me that there's 120 different packages to update that server. Uh, I'll do those in, in a little while. Uh, so this user interface of Webman, this isn't the default one that you see. I had changed it before I had to rebuild my server. So uh, when when I changed it, it I didn't realize it. I thought it changed it on the server, but it must do it where it, it stores a cookie or something that, uh, I mean, it's a beautiful interface. I love it and all, but uh, I just think that I should show you with the default one running. So let's see, where are we? Themes. So I want to switch back my theme. All right. So change theme. Uh, authentic. It's very beautiful. But uh, gray frame theme is the one that you want. Now here's here's an odd thing. When I hit change here, it's going to half change the theme. You're going to see a crummy version of Webman, this is very wrong. It looks like something terrible has occurred. And uh, really what, what the trouble is, is it takes a little while to finish updating uh, everything. So refreshing your browser will get you to see it in its natural form. So just uh, reload that browser. All right, so, and uh, this is not important, but that hashtag and the name, that is how it, uh, the actual different pages within Webmen are named those. So, so typically you've got that URL and each time you hit one of the other uh, sections, it's just, uh, it's just displaying them in this frame. 
So um, system information is your default page that you always land on whenever you go in uh, with a fresh uh, point and click. All right, so so Webman's on, it's running. It wants me to go ahead and update these packages. I'm not going to do it quite yet. Uh, I want to put that uh, userman on there. Okay, my sudo had probably ran out. When you use the sudo and put your password in, it uh, typically times out. Your, so that if you walked away for a minute and somebody else came up to your machine, it would uh, not let them install software uh, uh, that you didn't want on there. So I did have to put my password in a second time. I'm not really sure what sudo stands for. I assume it's super user do an operation. Now one of the odd things about uh, userman is it's not running. It, it'll install but it doesn't run until your system's rebooted. Later on, we'll be going in and, in and out of a bunch of these different areas. These are all the possible softwares that you can add into your server and manage within Webmin. Currently, they're not on the system yet, like because th there's so many choices for a lot of these things, like. Uh, which firewall do you want? Uh, fail to ban, definitely going to want that. Um, backup agent, there's built in like there's built in things that do some of these already, uh, and that's why they're in the unused uh, section right now. But uh, Webalizer, that's something you're going to want on there. Spam assassins, kind of handy. I don't know if you want FTP, FTP running on your server or not. If you're going to do a lot of file upload downloads, uh, that might be handier for you to manage than doing it within the uh, within the file manager section. Uh, okay, so so my userman is on there now. And just to show you, in your you look in your system, uh, you'll you'll see which processors are running right now and which ones are set to automatically run at boot. And any one of those you can change. Uh, but element no P Q R S T U. So userman, you notice that. It is going to run at boot time, but it's not running right now. So let's just see if we can get it to start right now. Okay, it's done. Return to startup. Okay, so now the userman is the same URL basically as webman except for its port 20,000. So, and again we get the, the warning danger danger, uh, 
but because you just built it, you know that oh, user means use that interface too. That's funny. So, yeah, I want to uh, change the theme for you so that you see what the gray framed theme. That's funny. Why is there two of them? So, and authentic wasn't showing. That's, that's also kind of weird. Okay, so that's what your user min theme is going to look like by default uh, if you don't do any changes to it. So uh, each one of your user can set up uh, their own stuff. You've got applications that you can add or remove from your users in your webmin configurations. Um, oh. Refresh. So, uh, userman configuration. You can go in there and change all kinds of things about how the userman actually works. Um, then you restart it whenever you make a change. But uh, that's that's the basics. That's what we were trying trying to accomplish in this video, and uh, so I'm gonna close that userman. I'm gonna go back to my sys info. I'm gonna go into the packages. Now there's another way into packages. There's a lot of ways into things, but software packages, software package updates, and so forth. We're in software package updates. Blah blah blah. So, I'm going to update the selected packages. I'm going to install now, and this is going to go for a long time. And you get to look through and see what each one of those things are doing. This is just going to keep getting longer and longer. Done. Okay, so install is complete. Successfully installed all those packages. Um, there's one spot that you get to reboot. It noticed that uh, that you needed to reboot, so that appears most often when you're doing package updates. You won't see that reboot button at the bottom. Usually, you just return to package list. Uh, so. Uh, so one spot is your in your boot up and shut down. You've got a remote reboot of your system always at the bottom. Shut down and reboot system. Uh, whenever you've done a set of updates or security updates or something that went on, your system information screen is going to have this piece appear because it's necessary to reboot. So uh, I'm going to tell it to reboot and then it takes a while for my system so maybe five minutes later when I refresh this URL or uh, I ask for system information again it'll it'll be back.